So now we are going to continue from where we stopped. We are continuing from step three. Uh, in the previous lesson, we actually see how we can display a HTML page uh, using time leave. Uh, we displayed it as you can see. Now we are going to remove this and then create the model, the model that is the data of the class we are going to actually be using. And then we are going to be working at the back end at this time for most, for most part of this tutorial. So let's go to the back end. Remember to subscribe to my channel. If you've not subscribed, click on the subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel so that you kind of motivate me to keep making this lesson for you. So if you have any challenge, feel free to leave for me, uh, leave that challenge. Just mention it in the comment box. Tell me this is the challenge you are facing. I'm going to help you. I'm actually going to reach you by Skype and try to do a screencast and help you solve this problem. So now we have this home controller we can actually use this same home controller to work. So let's maybe we can just leave this home controller for now. So let's go ahead to create the model. So the model is simply the class that represents the entity, the, the, the class that represents the data we are going to be storing. So let's say we are going to be storing the nationalities or list of countries. So uh, let's go to create, it says create a class name nationality and put it in the model package. So, so to do that, to, to do that, simply come to this place and right click and just say new and create a new class. And we are going to call it nationality because we are going to be storing list of nationalities. And now we are going to put it in the models package. So at the end of this place, just say dot models. All right. Because it's good to put all your models in one package. So that is best practice. If you don't do it, this will still work, but it's better to put things in the right place. So now we have nationalities and we are going to now uh, build up this nationality class using the private member variable. So let's say private integer ID, so nationality has ID, and we have um, uh, private, the name of the country in uh, string name, private uh, string uh, updated by capital, yeah, string capital. Uh, private is always good to use smaller lowercase letters to name your variables. It's actually camel case. Start with a lowercase. That is what it means. Not lowercase all through. String. Uh, what else? Who updated it? So updated by. So this you can see we have a package in between because separate two words. Two words. Private. This time we have dates. Updated. Um, that is the date it was updated. So now we have this is asking us of import dates. So we are going to play is from java.dot Java .util package. So now let me just generate the constructors to right click and go to source and choose generate constructors. I want to generate constructors using fields. And yes, I want to generate the constructor. Fine, it generated the constructor for me. I don't like seeing this super here. So let me also add an empty constructor. It's always good to have an empty constructor in the class nationality. So an empty constructor simply doesn't have anything in the body. So this is how it is. But finally, I'm going to generate getters and sectors. I'm going to just generate getters, getters and sectors. So I'm going to go to source and going, I'm going to say generate getters and sectors. And I'm selecting everything generating all the getters and sectors. So basically, this is what we need. We've created the model, so let's see where we are. Okay, now the time for annotation. So remember, we are not going to be creating this table in the database. The table will be created for us automatically by uh, by JPA, by Hibernate. So let me not confuse things. Let's, let's just annotate it with an entity. So this is going to tell Hibernate that this class represents a table and that table will be created for us in the database. Uh, the ID is going to be annotated with the I, at ID annotation, at ID annotation. And again, the dates, we actually want to store only the dates. So uh, we use another annotation called at dates time format and uh, pattern 
equals uh, I think it should be y y y y m m d d I think this should be the correct way I think or maybe double quotes all right I think I got it yeah what am I doing here all right so to remove all of these uh, errors so simply say control shift o on your keyboard it will it will, it will simply insert all the all the necessary packages for you so control shift o java persistent entity mm -hmm. yeah java persistence id and that is fine date format is also inserted so why do we have this error so i don't need semicolon at this point I go, i'm going to remove it i'm going to save everything so what are we forgetting so we've created okay this is what i was looking for and i actually got it so let's just say mm so we've created all our uh, the model we need we've created it so you can see uh this is the architecture we are working with so we actually have created the model so basically we are still somewhere in this database more like we are, we are building the database so we are doing bottom-up approach so we created a model more like we created a table in the database right now that is what we just did the next step is to build the repository so you can see the next one on top of the database is the repository it's like an interface to the database so let's do that right now so to do that the steps are here for you create a new class called nationality repository inside the repositories package so i'm going to right click and i'm going to say new class and i'm going to call it uh, nationality repository so it's the best practice to use the name of the model and the, and the name of the the other comp other item you want to create so this in this case you have nationality repository mm -hmm. so now nationality repository should actually be an interface because there are many methods that exist in jpa repository that we need to use so i'm going to just it's going to actually be an interface so i'm, I'm going to collect correct it so interface i'm going to correct it now uh, the, the the nationality repository being an interface you need to specify the class that you want to perform crude operation on but before then it's going to extend is going to extend crude extends crude repository repository crude repository is an extension of jpa repository so provides you with features like uh insert select the delete and update so we don't have to write this function so it's provided for by jpa repository which actually is a super class of crude repository or a super interface there something like that so the class we are working with is nationality nationality and the id type is an integer integer okay so these are the two things you simply need to do for you to have your repository complete and that is where i've mentioned here okay i'm going to save this file and i'm going to on my keyboard Control shift o and it's going to import all the necessary uh, packages for us or namespaces so we are done with step four now create the service so let's go to look at this diagram so you can see business service is on top of the repository so business service is a is, a, is a simply a layer uh, that serves between stays between the controller and the repository so it's best practice to use a business service so that you'll be able to separate uh, different functions uh, of your application so Although the REST controller can actually bypass the business service if you want, but that is not recommended. So let's create the business service. So the steps is given here. So the name of this service is going to be nationality service. So I'm going to right click and say new or uh, new class. I think I missed a step, but I'll, I'll correct it. So the package is so uh, services services. Uh, that is the name of the package so to give a create a package just say dots at the end of the existing package to create a new package so the service name will be nationality service okay yeah so everything is okay i think 
Mm, okay, I think I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in order. No, no, I forgot something. So we have this annotation in the repository. Let's go back to the repository. We actually should uh, annotate the repository with at repository annotation. So this I've opened back the repository and I'm going to annotate it with at repository annotation. So that is what I forgot. Say this type here. And now let's go back to the service. Save everything. So annotate the service with at service annotation, at service annotation. All right. So the nice thing we want to do is to write the methods uh, auto. Okay, we need to auto wire the repository into the service. So that's the kind of credit connection between the repository and the service. So we are or to wire the repository into the service so that the service could actually make use of the repository in case it needs some ob object so that the repository could always give this object to the service anytime. So I'm going to say uh, or to wire the repository into the service. So to do that, create a private member variable of the class type. So let me just write it so that private uh, nationality repository. Three four Z three nationality three four Z three. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, auto wire it. So simply annotate it with that auto wire. So what I'm doing now is teaching you how to do the right thing. So I'm using all the best practices, all the good design patterns, and this is the way it should be. Uh, if you get some interview and you're able to perform in this way on some job, you're actually the best. So I don't I don't really want to cut any corners. I want to do it the correct way and the right way. So the next thing is to create this method. So we are going to write this method in the service so that these methods can actually be calling the repository to get these things from the repository. So these things, the data, the model, resides in the database which is available in the repository. And then we can, from the service, we can call these methods from the repository. So let's start with the first one. Uh, private, uh, so it's going to be public, nationality, nationality gets, mm -hmm, private list of nationality. So private list of nationality gets nationalities nationality okay so now we need to get this from the repository so to do that is very simple one line will help us to do this so I simply say uh, nationality repository So it's going to give me some intelligence so that so find all yeah all right so mm, Java at least all right so find all get nationalities and I'm going to return nationalities so just return this return this okay and just cast it to a list of nationalities like this okay. We've written the first method and I'm running out of time, so I'm going to complete this class in the next lesson. I would like to recommend try to you try it out yourself so that in the next lesson we can actually be a little bit faster. I'd like to remind you to subscribe. I'd like to thank you for viewing. I'm really really proud of you. You are doing great if you've come up to this point. If you have any problem, let me know and we'll see you in the next lesson.